On today's podcast, we're going to look at five organizational culture trends for 2024. I'm looking at two recent lists by Forbes and uh, research by Gallup that are predicting the year ahead. I'm going to be bringing my own observations, my own experience to the table. Here's some things we ought to be aware of, we ought to have our eyes on, we ought to be thinking about as we think about our teams, our people, the organizations, the cultures that we're trying to create in the year ahead. What are those five organizational culture trends that we ought to be aware of. Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back, to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced the best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back, breathe in good oxygen, and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey everyone, it's Jason and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast. Wherever you are and however you're coming to the podcast today, welcome in. So glad you are here. We are in season eight. We've got well over 210 episodes now. So thank you to you, the listeners, uh, for continuing to keep this momentum going and and showing excitement for this podcast. If you're new to the podcast, welcome in. Hope you'll go back, check out all the great episodes, content, micropod, interviews with amazing people, all that. I hope you'll go back and check it out. And if you are one of the OGs that have been with us from the very beginning of this, thank you. So glad this continues to add value to your life, your work. Hope this is a place, it continues to be a place for you to step back, to think, Uh, to reflect and hopefully breathe a little good oxygen into you and help you think about the person that you're trying to be, the temperature you're trying to set in your life as a leader and your family, and certainly with the team and the culture that you're trying to create. So, uh, so glad you're here and excited for today's episode. Before we do that, if you will do me the quick favor and rate the podcast five stars, of course, uh, I hate that I have to ask that, but Keep being told, keep telling people that Uh, if anybody will take the time to, uh, you know, rate it five stars, leave an authentic review in your own words about how episodes have resonated with you. Those are really good ways that Pete help the algorithms work and help people find this this podcast. So thank you to that. And anybody that obviously shares it, shares it on social media or with your colleagues at work or says, hey, you know, hey, let's have a team listen to it. This is a topic we really need to talk about. Let's listen to it and let's have a conversation. All of those ways help the podcast spread and and uh, most importantly, have an impact with the people that are listening. So that uh, is really helpful. And I appreciate anybody that takes the time to do that. So I want this to be a continued spot to you uh, on your own leadership and culture journey, a chance for you to be able to think, of course. Uh, and one of the perhaps gifts that perhaps I can give you is the gift of some time. I know that not everyone has enough time to read all the wonderful articles and content that's out there in the world today. So from time to time, I want to highlight some articles or there some themes and provide my reflections and my observations on the content and trends in the world of developing leaders and cultures. So on today's podcast, we're going to look at five organizational culture trends for 2024. Now, where did these come from? I'm looking at two recent lists by Forbes and uh, research by Gallup that are predicting the year ahead. But I'm not just going to be identifying all the trends and all the predictions they have. I'm going to be bringing my own observations, my own experience to the table and select five of the many predicted trends for the year ahead. But focus in on a few to say, hey, here's some things we ought to be aware of, we ought to have our eyes on, we ought to be thinking about as we think about our teams, our people, the organizations, the cultures that we're trying to create in the year ahead. What are those five organizational culture trends that we ought to be aware of? But before we dive into today's topic, let's pause, take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Many teams and organizations right now are realizing that they need to do both. They need to engage the minds and hearts of their people in person, where everyone in the room can experience the energy of congregating together and find clarity for the road ahead. And they also need to continue to find ways to engage the minds and hearts of their people virtually with those who are working remotely or at a distance. So if you are in the process of planning your next team meeting, company all hands event, 
conference or culture summit and are looking for support with a powerful keynote speech, facilitated team conversations that are the currency for change, or deeper development on leadership mindset and an intentional strategy for the culture you're trying to create, I hope you'll contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. It is my privilege and our honor to partner with great people to provide support in these areas. We want to breathe oxygen into your leaders and throughout your organization so you can set the temperature you want for your culture. We look forward to connecting with you soon. I hope you'll contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. It is my privilege and our honor to partner with great people to provide support in these areas. We want to breathe oxygen into your leaders and throughout your organization so you can set the temperature you want for your culture. We look forward to connecting with you soon. So the five organizational culture trends for 2024. And again, these are uh, the, some of this came. There were predictions made by Forbes and research by Gallup. And they select, you know, they had many different predictions and or items that they identified as trends for 2024. But I've, I've whittled it down to the five that at least rose to the surface for me based on my own observations, based on my reflections within teams and organizations, and also my predictions of what I see where there was alignment in their lists and what I've been seeing and experiencing within the teams and organizations that I'm serving uh, to help with developing people, uh, leadership, culture shaping, clarity around mission, vision, and values. And so uh, I'm trying to serve the listener with a shortened and more personal list uh, rather than long, long articles. Uh, So here we go. Uh, We're going to be talking about these are the five ones, and I'll I'll dive into these each individually. But the five trends that we're going to talk about on this is the first one being uh, what I'm calling the human touch and and the artist formerly known as soft skills. Number two being the experience economy grows. Number three, resiliency is rewarded and sought after. Four, engagement and trust will be needed and grown. And five, hybrid culture can be great if effectively led. So those are the five organizational culture trends for 2024 that we're going to dive into a little bit today. And so I hope that uh, something in there jumped out to you, but I encourage you to listen in and I'll, I'll do a quick job of of. of describing these uh, in quick fashion of the, you know, of the r- roughly 20 or so workplace and culture trends that Forbes and Gallup's and others identified. These are just five. Again, these were the ones that rose to the top of my list based on my experience, my observations, and also my in- intuition about where I see things going in the year ahead. So let's share a little bit about each of these five organizational culture trends in 2024. The first one being the human touch and the artist formerly known as, quote-unquote, soft skills. As it becomes increasingly feasible to automate technical aspects of work, so coding, research, data management, you know, those are examples, the ability to leverage what has traditionally been referred to as soft skills for tasks that still require a human touch is gonna has always been critical and is going to continue to be critical. And so in 2024, um, we see organizations increasing their investment in developing and nurturing skills and attributes such as emotional intelligence, communication, interpersonal problem solving, high level strategy and thought leadership. Those are things that that both Forbes and Gallup has have identified saying that, hey, in 2024, organizations are they see them in increasing their investment in, in, in the need to, to nurture these skills and develop this kind of emotional intelligence, our communication skills, our interpersonal problem solving, our high level strategy, our thought leadership. Now, those of you that know me well know that I dislike the term soft skills because I believe it's an old school idea that frankly, I don't think it, the, the terminology is even true because as you dive into talking about skills such as emotional intelligence, uh, a servant leadership mindset, the ability to have courageous conversations, managing of your time, your energy, your strengths, these aren't soft skills. In fact, they are the hard skills. You know, as I, I 
my experience with teams and organizations everywhere I go, these are the things, these are the skills and attributes that everybody wants, and yet they're the hard ones. The comment I hear all the time from people, if it's the, the, the working with people and, and, the, and the, the emotional intelligence required to manage ourselves and other people, that is the tough stuff. So they aren't just soft skills or hard skills. I would say they are just the skills necessary to being successful in the world and certainly as a leader or a part of any team. And the best teams and organizations in the year ahead, and I believe forever, and this has always been true, will continue to devote time, energy, and resources to helping people keep the human touch alive in their organization as more automation takes place and help their people raise the level on these critical skills and mindsets, helping them develop how we think and practice emotional intelligence and servant leadership and how do we have courageous conversations in effective ways to be participants in culture shaping, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of these things aren't just the soft skills, the human touch and the not soft skills, but the skills are going to be needed and more developed and invested in into the future. Number two trend in organizational culture that I see for the year ahead is the experience economy is going to continue to grow. So imagine a line on a graph that rates your customer's sentiment at every touch point where they interact with your company, your goods, your services, your organization. That illustrates the concept of customer experience. And while traditionally a company might build a business model around superior quality or value, in 2024, the impetus is to ensure that every single in interaction and experience makes the customer feel good, smile, appreciate the experience that they're a part of. This means personalizing marketing that delivers what they need at the right time, on-time delivery, frictionless setup and installation, and efficient problem resolution. It's becoming increasingly common for companies and brands to appoint you know, a chief experience officer to ensure these principles are fully integrated into all the business strategies. So it's not just checking the box of did we, did we deliver the product or service, but it's the experience as a part of it. And so many places will focus this experience economy idea just on the quote unquote customer experience. But my observation, my study, my experience is that everyone's experience is is going to be critical and always has been a critical, but in the in the path ahead is going to be even more overtly named as critical. Certainly we know the employee experience not only drives outcomes, but also the retention, attraction metrics that are a part of organizational health in the world today. And we also know that your company, your brand, your business, your mission, your organization will continue to be amplified or diminished because of the experience that all feel, not just the customer, but everybody within your experience and within your culture and your experience economy. So the experience economy is going to continue to grow. The third trend in organizational culture, resiliency is rewarded and sought after. Resiliency is rewarded and sought after. We're all still recovering from many challenging circumstances from the last few years, and the year ahead will not be without obstacles. We know that. There will be more challenges and obstacles on the road ahead. There always is, right? So resiliency, hiring it, you know, hiring for it, developing people, resiliency in people, and rewarding the people that are able to to show resiliency is going to be key. And ensuring an organization is protected from whatever threat is around the corner is critical. So that could mean cyber attacks, economic downturns, environmental events, war, global pandemics, the emergence of a disruptive new competitor in your market. It could be all kinds of things. But it's about taking what we've learned from companies that have survived and even thrived in turbulent times and using it to plan and prepare for what might happen tomorrow. So despite you know having a crystal ball, the future is never certain. And building resilience to any threats that might emerge will be a key business trend and organizational 
culture trend in the year ahead. So resiliency will be an attribute of leadership and culture development that will be needed and is an opportunity to strengthen your people and culture from within to help them develop mental grit, agility, and the kind of resiliency required to not just, you know, when things get challenging, get tough, quit and run the other direction. And these necessary attributes will help everything and everyone throughout that experience economy that I just talked about is our ability to kind of handle hard things better. If you remember uh, a, a uh, episode that I did just on that idea of mental grit and being able to handle hard things better, uh, if not, go back and check out that episode that I did. But developing this kind of resiliency is going to be key, and it's a great way to help provide true human development for your people and to care for the humans that are within your organization. The fourth organizational trend that I will uh, identify is engagement and trust will be needed, always has, but also grown. According to recent Gallup research, only 23% of U.S. employees strongly agree that they trust the leadership of their organization. Think about that. Only 23% say they strongly agree and they trust the leadership of their organization. And only 20% of employees say they feel truly connected to their organization's culture. And, yet, and, and we know that employee engagement levels in the U.S. have actually started to crawl back a little bit in 2023 after the post-pandemic slump and, and, and the misery of those couple of years. But one particular concerning trend is the d- decrease in employees who feel connected to their organization's mission and purpose. This sense of connection inspires employees to go above and beyond basic job demands and push toward excellence. It also substantially boosts loyalty and retention. Yet we also, what we also know is we know people are craving engagement. They're craving trust and connection. And you've heard me talk about all the research related to them wanting to be a part of a more meaningful culture. And yet few employees trust the people in charge. So this raises a serious question about morale in American businesses and coincides with a historic decline in employee engagement. And simply put, organizations have reason to be concerned that employees' trust in leadership is dismal. It's dismal. So this is a massive opportunity for leaders to engage and actively build trust and set out on a trust-building initiative to, to build back connection and trust with the people around them. So the symptoms of a broken organizational culture are as clear as day. Stalled initiatives, deteriorating morale, and bad customer feedback, you know, clear signs that employees aren't connected to their company's culture. And when an organization's culture is in trouble, everything else becomes more difficult and metrics typically follow in the negative way, just like when cultures are healthy, metrics follow in the positive way. So the best teams, the best leaders, the best organizations in the year ahead, they're going to have strategies and have strong commitments to intentionally and proactively engaging with the minds and hearts of their people in the future culture that they are building together and bringing people into participation for that. And the fifth and last uh, organizational culture trend for the year ahead that I will uh, focus on for today is hybrid culture can be great. It just has to be effectively led. So hybrid work, uh, I believe that some iteration of this is here to stay. Hybrid work offers the advantages of certainly a more flexible work environment while also posing, we know, some unique challenges. In terms of advantages, hybrid workers have higher engagement. You know, it's actually statistics are showing that they're more highly engaged in some ways, but overall well-being and lower turnover risk than fully on-site workers who are remotely capable. Leaders and managers tend to recognize the benefits, but also the challenges related to hybrid work and, and also are certainly interested in how do we reduce burnout, improve retention, you know, expand our talent pool so that we can bring more creative, skilled people into our organization. And at the same time, we also know that working apart from people, being totally isolated on different schedules can create its own obstacles. Organizations that plan to move forward with hybrid for the long term, uh, you know, they, they, they need to thoughtfully create and fully commit to a strategy 
for how they best communicate, how they best collaborate, how are they going to build relationships and solidify their work culture so that they aren't a bunch of isolated, distant, independent contractors. So what I'll say is um, not every place is or has done this well. So, and this isn't finished, by the way. Expectations still aren't clear in many places uh, about how we're going to communicate or what the expectation might be. And good dialogue on what success looks like is critical. The organizations that are doing this well are having dialogue about what a hybrid, you know, feel and experience and 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 performance is going to look like and, and to be able to have those courageous conversations. Plus, my observation is that places are losing sight of the important rhythm and cadence of engaging in person with their people and keeping them, you know, uh, staying connected with their people. So every place is going to have to find their own rhythm and their own authentic cadence. But it is a part of helping hybrid culture work well is not only how do we communicate and set good expectations and do the remote stuff well, but it's also about how do we bring people together and do the in-person stuff really well. Uh, like like always, it's going to be as, as critical as, as ever. So uh, what I would also say is what is, you know, an opportunity for you, wherever you, however you're thinking about this, is what is that authentic cadence for you to keep people, you know, connected, to, so that they're not totally remote. It's art, it's not science, but when pe- when it's led effectively, this hybrid environment can be great for many people in many industries. And there is no, not all industries, it might work, but there is no one size fits all. But it is an opportunity for your experience economy to ask the question of what fits us best and how can we be most effective for our product, our service, whatever we're providing, and certainly for that experience economy within our organizational culture. So my last observation for today, and this is, goes back even to the, the pandemic and everything that happened over those few weirdo world uh, years, uh, you know, that we were in weirdo world, uh, is if you didn't think developing leaders and culture was important before 2020, Chances are you now do. And all of this that we're talking about today is an extension of all of that. And so the best leaders, teams, and organizations are coming together to design, to connect, and to lead that newly created future that they want. So I hope today's episode got you thinking in some ways. I hope it pauses you to to step back and to think about these, these five organizational culture trends and how they might relate to what you're trying to build, to ask yourself the question of how am I engaging the human touch and and developing the, the skills related to how we connect and work together and emotional intelligence and all those related skills that we talked about. How are you thinking about your own experience economy and how to help that create that along the way for everyone in your organization? How are you rewarding and seeking out and developing resiliency in your people? What's your strategy to build engagement and trust with everyone throughout the organization? And how are you communicating and what are your expectations and strategies on how to deal with effectively this hybrid work culture? So I hope these things got you thinking. I hope uh, it continues to add value. If you have thoughts about this or if we can help in any way, email us info at jasonvbarger.com, info at jasonvbarger.com. And I look forward to the next topics that we'll dive into together. So cheers to the path ahead uh, in the year ahead. And remember that leadership, the future of leadership is you, is me, is us. We have an opportunity to rally the people around us and to create the cultures that we want to be a part of. So step back, remember, be a thermostat and breathe good oxygen. Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using, and share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, This spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to you and your organization, 
please contact us at jasonvbarger.com, jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we are all ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.